Joining us now, our very good friend to break this down, Stephen Yates. He's a foreign policy expert and uh, having previously advised former VP Dick Cheney in the Bush administration. Stephen, always so good to see you from your bunker. So this, I mean, give us give us this in very simple terms, because there's always been instability in this region. There there have been some legitimate criticisms, I think, of previous administrations for not paying attention to some of the fights between the communities there in Myanmar. Also, what is the significance between the refusal to call it Burma and then calling it Myanmar? I know that was something that was addressed by uh, Jen Psaki, I think, today, earlier today. Um, what what did it, give us the the the. I guess, the, the well-spoken view on this situation. Well, Dana, it's always a pleasure to join you to talk about good news and easy to understand topics. And so this is one <laughs> of those that is, is really in many ways a burning hot mess. Uh, and uh, it's, it matters, I think, to viewers today because it's also on President Biden's radar. I mean, he was hit with uh, a question about this and he said that if they don't reverse the military coup, then he threatened, quote unquote, to take action. Now, no one knows at all what he means by that phrase, uh, but I don't think that the American people are prepared or revved up to deploy U.S. troops to some place that they can't even decide what to call, whether it's called Burma or Myanmar. Mm. And so this is very, very far away and very remote, but it matters because the new president's decided to put American prestige and the commander in chief's imprimatur on uh, on saying that he demands this coup be undone. Uh, the the draw up to this though uh, is I think a travesty of the international human rights community, and I put air quotes around community because the United Nations Human Rights Commission is a joke, uh, usually run by tyrants of the world, uh, leftists of the world unite around the cause of human rights, but don't in, in the end do much. Uh, to bring about the human rights for people. But Aung San Suu Kyi was a darling of the democracy movement in Burma, uh, back when it used to be called Burma. Uh, and there was a period where the military rule pulled back, her coalition was elected, and she's been in a leadership position in Myanmar and Burma. And don't worry, folks, it's okay to call it whichever you prefer. Uh, and they, uh, and and but she's left this I think sparkling veneer of uh, Nobel Prize winning uh, freedom fighter because of the alleged genocide against the Rohingya Muslims in Burma, that number in the several hundreds of thousands. Uh, and so she's a complicated figure now. The military has taken control. A lot of leftists in the United States want to say, yeah, but we just had a coup here. I just referred to the Merriam Webster and look under coup, and you'll probably find some involvement of a military taking control. And so uh, there is a coup in Burma. There wasn't one in the United States. Uh, this is a problem. But frankly, I'd be much more comfortable with the Trump doctrine of pushing friends and allies in the region to carry some of this load rather than the United States running first and foremost to say we're going to fix this. Yeah, and I think that's a great point as well because I, I, there are a number of countries in that region that this is in their backyard. So why is it why does it always fall at the feet of the United States to to get involved in a situation like this? I mean, you know, Japan, China, uh, South Korea, a number of I mean, India, you have a number of countries that are closer and more affected, particularly border wise, because I know there are borders. That's a, a hotbed of violence there um, that it just seems that this should be their responsibility. So I'm 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 always mystified as why the United States is like that's the first country drawn into uh, discussions on this. Right. And I don't, I, you know, I, I answering my own question, mm -hmm. but if we had a real press, <laughs> then when a president or a press secretary, and frankly, there's just as much controversy about how to pronounce her last name than there is to how to pronounce the name of this country we're talking about. If we had a real press, there would be a question that followed up to say, what exactly would the United States really be able to do in a circumstance mm -hmm. like this? Is action mean we're going to give them more sanctions? Uh, what, what's that going to do to reality on the ground there? Uh, we're going to have some coalition of the willing take this up? Uh, who? When? How? I mean, literally, he's been giving executive orders nonstop for the last week and a half. When has he even talked to allies about this country? So, uh, so much is there to be done. I think the new administration is, tr is trying uh, to get verbally out in front of an issue, but I don't think they have policy or resources or allies backed up on this. And so I suspect it's probably going to get worse before it gets better.
Yeah. And what, what what is the consequence of that? I mean, just like, I mean, obviously, instability anywhere, if left unchecked long enough, becomes instability, it seems, everywhere. So what what would be an, an immediate consequence, at least as far as the United States interests are concerned, which is the, you know, the kind of clinical approach that you have to have when you're when you're talking right. about these issues in different parts of the world? Well, I think it's totally appropriate to say that we have values that we cherish and we're going to speak up on behalf of those values, uh, that we uh, er, encourage our friends and allies to do more, to speak up for those things that are common uh, between us and uh, that we look forward to sharing our fair share, uh, holding our fair share of the burden uh, to try to help resolve situations. Uh, but we have to have partners that we can work with. Uh, and it sort of cheapens American prestige if we just sort of mouth off that you better you better fix this or there's going to be consequences when it's really an untested proposition what consequences would be under this current administration. They don't even have most of their government confirmed and in place yet. Uh, and so uh, I so to me, I think that they should be talking about the values and pressing others. Uh, to take stock and recommend actions, and the U.S. should play a supporting role. I don't think there's any problem in saying that there's there's good and bad in this situation. Uh, that we don't we don't want there to be a military coup in this country. I don't think. Uh, but then again, I'm not prepared to deploy American forces to do anything about it. Uh, I probably am okay with some more sanctions, although I doubt that it's going to change reality on the ground. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree with you with that. I, I don't think that it would either. Uh, still in that part of the of the region, China increasing, obviously, their rhetoric, saber rattling, because now they say that Taiwan, any attempt to break away and seek any kind of independence would mean war. The Biden administration has said, well, well, no, tensions aren't at the point where we need to see confrontation. And that it was, I think the phrase that they used was, it was, quote, unfortunate that, that China said this. Um, the it, It's always, uh, Taiwan's status, I know, has always kind of been treated oddly because they they believe and they act like they're they, they are their own sovereign entity and they don't even need to make any kind of formal declaration of independence whereas China is positioning like well, we're afraid that they're going to make a formal declaration of independence they're more like a province of ours so this I, and and of course obviously with the whole situation with coronavirus them excluding them from the world stage uh, and, and with involvement in the World Health Organization so ultimately what does this mean because this has been this has been an ongoing problem for some time but to me it seems it does seem a little bit new that they're saying there could be the potential for war but I think that that's because there's a new administration there definitely is a testing of new administrations that goes on uh, but if th this this challenge of how to treat democratic Taiwan versus communist China would be very very easy if our Ivy League elites and cardigan wearing foreign service officers would listen to the American people. I think they instinctively would understand that here's a, a self-governing people who for decades have struggled to get out from under martial law. They've established their own democratic processes. They are friendly. They actually, in some ways, feed and provide relief to the world. Uh, they are involved in almost all of the high technology that we live and breathe with uh, in our modern way of life and our economic well-being. We literally can't afford for the communist Chinese to take over uh, the island of Taiwan. It would have a massive, massive impact on everything from what you hold in your hand to how you operate your home and your offices. Oh, yeah. And people need to get that realization in their mind. Uh, these people would also be very ungovernable if the Chinese communists wanted to come over and take over. So in some ways, uh, to use a Japanese term, this is a bit of a kabuki dance where it's a little bit of theater where they make bold threats. They have the ability to act on them. We have to take that seriously because one day they may do what they say. Uh, but really what this calls for, I think, is more clarity on our part. Stop fumbling over the mumbo jumbo of Kissingerian formulations of the past. There is a democratic Taiwan. They have an elected president. Uh, you would think that liberals around the world would be happy to celebrate a, a democratically elected female president. Uh, and, you know, why would they subjugate her to being just called an elected authority mm -hmm. and sort of 
play these games of denigrating Taiwan. If Taiwan wants to defend itself, we, sh we, should, we should help them defend it themselves. Uh, we don't necessarily have to put ourselves into the equation, although we have historic obligations we should honor. But this is not as complicated as our so-called experts want to make it out to be. And a little bit of brains and common sense would go a long way in keeping both Taiwan and America safe. Everyone needs brains and common sense. There's the pull quote from Stephen Yates. Stephen, always appreciate you breaking these issues down because, you know, a lot of people, they, they see these headlines and they know that they're going to be affected in some way. But you do such a great job of uh, informing them in no uncertain terms exactly how this is going to uh, impact them. So we appreciate your skill in that area. Always good to see you. Have a great, have a great week, my friend. Godspeed.